if you were in a position for whatever reason i don't i don't think i need to come up with a long convoluted story of why this is happening i think you can do that on your own um if you were given the choice between having your friends leave you forever you know, no more friends that's one choice and the other choice would be no more air forever or you could say no more food if you wanted or or you know something really basic and important like that um you know which would you choose or or you know if it was just an immediate thing if you had to go one or two days without your friends or, or friends and family i guess i'll just raise the stakes friends and family or one or two days without air and food i probably need a new color by now but which would you choose between these two i think almost universally anyone would choose to give up their friends for a day or two i i started out a little too meanly saying friends forever um and you know wh why is that i i guess the obvious answer is that if you go two days without air you'll die but you can live for a while without food or water or uh you know if if you let's change it up if you had to live without your house if you have to live on the street for two days or you could give up all communications with your friends no phone calls no texting with your friends for two days versus living in the rain in the gutter you know having people having people walk by and see you laying on the street um e even if you weren't going to die i think you would still choose the security over over just uh just the social communication here and Abraham Maslow, which is who we're talking about now, um noticed that people people always gravitate toward this first. I I don't want to get too ahead of myself of what we're talking about, but Abraham Maslow was a psychologist and he he kind of saw this and he said, "Oh, oh, maybe there's a couple other um levels that we can talk about. People always want the the uh physiological Physiological. Lo logical. Uh, I I have it written down. I still can't even copy it onto the screen. But so these these things, air, food, water, shelter, are physiological needs. Like you you need them to live. You you can't just be uh you know in, in the hundred degree heat uh, in the middle of the desert. You want a shelter and some water. But then friends and family over here on this side these are more social needs. And so I I'm guessing that these are the two he might have started with and then he expanded it spent expanded his theory to five things which I'll show you. Um I I guess I'll just go ahead and draw it. Um he kind of put them I don't know if he actually put them in a period or if other people did after. I'm going to attempt to draw you I have to leave myself lots of space. Uh he came up with this pyramid thing. Okay. So at the base of the pyramid and and the idea here is that you you start I don't know about being born, but you you, you know how you can't you can't stand here unless you have something to stand on. You have to be on the pyramid so you have to climb all these steps i guess uh i'll i'll continue to explain this but at the very bottom is physiological logical needs okay and what does that mean that's the food and water all right these on the side uh so this thing this very basic it, it's like the food pyramid you need mostly this and then once you get to the top you can you can have some sweets if you want it it's sort of analogous to that so this is you know food water shelter so that's the thing that you're going to take care of first if you're just you know dropped in the desert you're not going to say oh wh who's going to be my friends out here you're going to say where's the water you, you know uh, this is your first priority i guess in life y your most basic need and then the next one up 
if we can draw a new level, is uh, what's commonly called security needs. And this is sort of, I think this sort of builds on the other one really nicely, or, or kind of in an obvious way, because it's just making sure that you'll still have your shelter tomorrow. It's, uh, you know, like a, a, a job is a security need. Uh, just having a steady income of money or health insurance, I guess health in general, um, and I don't know, health insurance is just if you get sick you'll be taken care of so you don't have to worry all the time about how am I going to get a paycheck tomorrow, am I going to be alive tomorrow, um, I, that, that's how I would explain the security needs, just you know, you have you have your food and your water, but you might be saying, what's going to happen next week, I guess, is, is sort of the basis of the security needs. So if I go up one more, I should pick a different color now. Up here, we finally get to the social needs, which I, I think these two kind of bleed together, the social and the security, but on, on the social needs, um, you know, that's what I said, friends friends, family, love, all that stuff. Uh, this is having people like you, I guess, um, and and be having someone to communicate with, having someone to share feelings and experiences with, and all that. So, and and you know, I wrote family. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean first you get food and then you get a family. It's you know, just, just where your priorities are. You, you know, first you, first you find the oasis and build yourself a a fort to spend the night in, and then you call your mom. Or you know, it, it's uh, I I don't want to get too tied up with this is pertaining to reality, but just um, y you know, this is about your motivations, I guess. Y your first, your primary motivation is is you know do I have food and water, and then will I have it tomorrow, and then, okay, now I feel secure. Now I'm done with security, and I feel safe, and I'm going to make friends in this new place. Um, and that's, that's my basic explanation of this. And then when we get to the top, or almost to the top, we have esteem. Esteem, and that means feeling good about yourself, like self-esteem. And I think I might have to make a correction video or something if I'm wrong about this, but I think that self-esteem and esteem are both here. So, um, feeling good about yourself and having others feel good about you. Feeling good about self. Okay, and um, you know, you can you can have friends and still be not you can still not have self esteem just because you have people around who take care of you. And so um, you know, once you've met all these other needs, once you kind of have have your little associative group that you talk to, then you can start really contributing to the group and you can really um you know, make yourself feel good. You can build a, a brand new fort for everyone to live in, and then and then everyone will say, "Oh, you're a great person. Thank you for this this new place to live." Or, or you know, whatever it is, self-esteem. Um, I'll just move on to the next one, self-actualization, which I'm just about out of colors. I'll I'll draw it in bright yellow green. Self-actualization, because I'm probably out of room. I'll write what it is. Self-actualization. Actualization. I think that's how you spell that. I kind of take it for granted that I spell things wrong nowadays, but uh, self-actualization I think is kind of hard to define. But it's you know it's the peak of human existence. It's the the highest point that you can get to, and and I think it would be cheating to just do drugs and be really happy. This you have to earn. You have to fight your way up this pyramid and get all the way until you're standing here victorious and you're like, yes, I feel good about myself. I feel good about what I've done with my life. And um, 
Uh, the theory goes that not many people actually get here. Um, some examples that I've heard are Gandhi and uh, I think Eleanor Roosevelt is always cited. Eleanor Roosevelt. I'll just write off the screen so you can't tell that I don't know how to spell it. And, you know, Gandhi liberated India through peaceful, um, peaceful revolution, and I, I can see why he would be very happy with his life. He'd say, I led a good life, and maybe he feels at peace with death. That's something that I've heard. I'll write it over here. Uh, peace, peace in dying. And I don't know if this is exactly hand in hand. It, maybe, maybe if you reach this point once in your life, then you then you can say, okay, that's pretty good. I'll just I'll just live happily until the end. Now, peace in dying. Um, I, I guess people who uh, work in hospitals and see people go through the end a lot, they they say that if they've been self-actualized, if they have one story to tell about, you know, I really felt good about myself then I'm okay. So, um, let's see, why is this useful, I guess? You, you, know, you, can, you can use this as a guide for, I guess, getting yourself to self-actualization. Um, you know, you can think about, well, I, I obviously have food and water, and, and maybe I have a job. And, and just because you're, just because you're learning learning psychology online you're probably pretty high already it, people who people who are still you know fighting for food and water aren't going to be teaching themselves things so you you're probably near the top i'm making a, an assumption about you i guess but uh, also you can look at other people you can say oh he's not being very friendly you know if, if you meet someone who just seems like a jerk and you're saying why doesn't he want to make friends well, maybe he he's too busy worrying about his job or his health. Maybe this person is preoccupied down here on the pyramid, and he doesn't have time to make new friends and make this investment because he's still you know, maybe he's still fighting for water tonight. Maybe he's still looking for shelter. Um, it, it's just a a general case um, idea of why people do things. And I think that's what a lot of psychology is, just explaining why people do what they do.